Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Day's Garage. Today's video is part seven in the 68 Camaro rebuild, the car known as Basket Case. Now in the last video I left off with test fitting the quarter panel along with the whole side of the car and now I give you a different perspective looking at it from the rear. I mentioned before that I have to cut off the tail panel and I was trying to do that in a way that I could save the entire tail panel but I discovered that I couldn't. So, I, so what I ended up doing was taking the plasma cutter and cutting off the upper half of the tail panel and then I worked on separating the welds on the lower section. Now what's amazing to me, and I can show you this in a minute, what's amazing to me is the number of spot welds on this tail panel. You know, you look at some of these other cars, you look at the Mustangs and different, any other branding, let's say, and I've never seen so many spot welds on one panel. Literally, I counted 60 on the upper section and I think 32 on the lower. And that doesn't even count where it interacted with the quarter panels on the sides and up in the top where the gutter, let's say, connects together. So I don't understand why they have so many spot welds in there. It's not going to make that much of a difference, I'm sure. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, of course, I would love to save this tail panel, but it's too damaged. Somebody has put a strap through where the tail lights were and pulled on it, and it's just bent and mangled. So it's going to have to come off. And it would probably have to come off anyway just for the fitment of the quarter panels because they overlap and interconnect. So you can see, as I can show you, that I took the plasma cutter and I just cut straight along that body line to make it come loose. And this gives me access to this upper section because with the tail panel here, I could not get my chisel in here to separate the spot welds. And as I mentioned again in the other video, somebody else who worked on this car had started to take out these spot welds. And this is the section that I was talking about where there's literally 62 spot welds on this section plus these around this opening. And then underneath, there's another 32, I think, or 30. Every one of these little dimples is a spot weld. And all of those have to come off for it to come for or come loose for it to come off of the car. So that's what I'm in the process of right now. And of course, the whole point of all this is so that I can get the quarter panel on there, and that helps me verify that the whole side of the car is where it belongs, and I know that everything is going to line up. Again, I will not weld pieces together until I know that all the corresponding pieces fit. So it may involve me actually hanging the door back on a car, but that opening should be committed. You know, basically they built that on a jig. I, I should say that opening should be fine, but I may even hang the door. I don't know just yet, but I've got to get the quarter on this side and of course the quarter on that side, and I'll be fitting the tail panel, the deck filler panel, which goes up on top, on top of the package tray. It'll fill this space right here. So there's a lot of stuff that has to interact and test fit, test fit, test fit. I want to share some information with you. On this tail panel, I ended up removing, well, I counted all of the spot welds and it was 140 plus overall. So if you count all these in that midsection, which I don't understand why you would need that many, or the ones down here at the bottom, I think there were 60 in the middle and 30 something here and then all the others that went around the perimeter. So the old one and the new one. The new one actually looks like a pretty good stamping, pretty good copy. I'm going to put that up in place and show you some information on that. But I want to talk about something else at the moment. Uh, you may have remembered that there was some damage right here and that was from shipping where they had bowed this in and it actually cracked this right here. So I straightened that out and re-welded it I uh, made it solid again. I still have a little bit of blending to do. But I'm trying to test fit the quarter, and there's a variety of things that are in conflict. And I want to show you this because it's important that you know, if you're going to be dealing with this, what you're going to run into. Now, this kit, this car, came with the rain gutters. And I want to, I'll have to set the camera up so I can show you. But basically, if you look at the shape of this gutter, if you follow the shape here, and then when you come down this way, it's off. 
it's like it's higher or flared open somewhere in the middle and I don't know why and I'm going to show you more about that in just a minute here's the rain gutter for the passenger side and the front of it will line up or butt into the existing piece from the A pillar and then come back and this one actually feels a little bit better than the other side even though that is all new over there so again I'll show you some more on this uh, once I reset the camera now the reason this becomes important is whenever you're putting all this stuff together the quarter panel has to sit on top of that rain gutter so if you look at this piece here that I cut off now somebody keep in mind this was all cut off before I ever got the car so I don't have any real good template at this point but if you look at this piece this is what's left of the rain gutter and you can see I mean there's a cut line uh, from a plasma cutter or something I think this is probably the correct width roughly and then up here it's more plasma cutting but the point being you can see where this was positioned and it has a kind of a notch here that goes around this midsection it's kind of an odd shape and then as I go forward you can see how much of the rain gutter is still here and again this looks like a nice straight line so uh, you know, there's a good overhang there um, if you look you can see um, maybe maybe three-eighths of an inch something like that come back there and if I get the camera you can also gain or look at about maybe three-eighths of an inch so that gives me an idea of where it should be here I have the rain gutter from the A pillar that I cut off and that piece I'm going to salvage and get back on the car I'm going to have to straighten it out some because when this car was damaged there's actually a, a hump right here in the A pillar and the underside you can kind of see that's kinked right there so that thing is not reliably straight at this point but uh, even more is becoming a conflict um, because whenever you're putting all this together if you just put the rain gutter on and figured okay I'm looking at this dimension let me just weld it on and go from there the quarter has to fit and I want to show you something with that I need to get the quarter back up in place and show you some conflicts uh, that are going on with that With the quarter roughly in place, there's a few things that don't line up like they should. If you look at this location right here, it appears in my mind that this needs to go kind of this direction. Uh, back here, this isn't bad on the opening. It's pretty close, but it's a little bit short right here. So again, that kind of means things need to come back so this can go over some more. In the back here, this isn't bad. You know, I've got this piece of metal inside that's going to get attached to. And really, there's nothing else that I'm going to mess with right now because I want it to be able to move. On the wheel opening or the arch opening, it, it is a little short here. There's a little bit of a gap between, which means this kind of needs to go that direction. And that is proven by this little front section right here. I can push this and get it to kind of wrap around, but it's just a little bit off. Also, down below, this flange. I have it to where it lines up on the front. But it has to go in back here. So if you look at it from the inside, you can see the flange that I'm talking about. And that will have to be massaged slightly. The other thing that's a little bit of a conflict is this area right here. That's pretty minor just that this has a better angle on it and this is could be bent down slightly otherwise it lines up decent it fits decent down here the curve is even pretty close I mean they're almost in line with each other so let me show you what it looks like with the rain gutter in place I have the rain gutter clamped to the quarter and there's a little bit of a gap right here I don't feel that should be there and if you look at the distance inside 
that feels like more than three eighths of an inch. I didn't measure it. It's fairly consistent, but when you come up higher, it gets longer. It gets a bigger gap. But here's the bigger conflict. When you follow this along the line of the roof, it goes uphill. And it doesn't line up here. So there may be a possibility that this stamping is just meant to be close and you kind of massage it, you know, move it around a little bit as needed. But I know that it shouldn't have this gap. So again, this, this corner needs to go up on the quarter panel. And if I have to, I can manipulate this to get it in place. Um, but I'm going to have to play with some things. I'm going to have to, you know, straighten up that metal. And I also want to show you a little bit more on the quarter related to the wheelhouse. Okay, you're looking at the quarter panel from the inside and upside down, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> I have here a new wheelhouse or out of wheelhouse. And I show this on the Mustang videos as well. Whenever you're doing this stuff, go ahead and test fit the wheelhouse to the quarter panel. Now in this case, this wheelhouse should be a direct copy of the one that's in the car. So if I can, I get some vice grips on here, keep it in place, I can show you that it's actually very close to fitting the curve. It's off just a little in the front. And that may just be the nature of it. And I'll show you that. So it looks like it follows pretty well until you get up here in the front and then it's off slightly however I can squeeze this in and it's it's relatively close so it may take some massaging to get the wheelhouse to match exactly the other thing I'll point out is when I'm doing this when I'm restretching this it changes the shape slightly of the wheelhouse but I think it's it's actually pretty close when it comes to aftermarket parts so I'm pretty confident that this one is okay but I'm gonna to have to play with those other areas and try to get this quarter to fit better okay so here's the status right now I have the roof sitting on the car and things look pretty good this area right here this is just loose but I can easily squeeze this together and it takes care of that corner on the other side it is fitting very nice again just a little bit of manipulation and that has helped me decide that I need to do something different with the back section now I did adjust the metal here just kinda of hammered it up a little and uh, it still fits nice all through the jam but I have the rain gutter in place just kinda of shoved up underneath this and this is where I run into my real conflict. You know, I can only do so much with this metal. I can only push it so far and it'll cause a problem somewhere else or get manipulated and really kind of gets complicated whenever you're trying to move, you know, something one direction and then it fights you in the other direction. So what I think I'm going to have to do, because I need to get this flange up. There's just no way around it. Even with the... You know, the roof is not clamped down, but I can't get the rain gutter to come up anymore. So I may cut a slice somewhere about here and make this move. I don't want to remove, you know, cut it completely loose, but I have to cut it in such a way that I can move this piece of metal. The other thing down here is where the panel comes together. It's, the gap is a little bigger at the front and it's really tight at the back. Now I've had to manipulate Mustang stuff before to where I've had to cut stuff loose and I may do something similar here because I cannot bring this part of the quarter any further down because of the where it hits right now. Now I can cut that and change that angle slightly, weld it back together and it'll be fine. All of this again it just, it's just the way the metal fights you in different directions. Inside here, this is, it fits good, but 
it doesn't want to squeeze together. It just doesn't, I mean, it'll do it for the most part, but down here, it starts to get tighter and tighter, and I think it'll be fine, but I think, again, a lot of it is because I'm, I'm trying to go up whenever this part really needs to come down a little bit to clear the uh, wheelhouse, and up here, it feels like the panel needs to go down slightly, which would also mean this has to go up, so that's just not going to work. So I may end up doing some cutting. As far as the roof, it matches very well around the back section here. Now, this side I don't have the quarter on. I'll have to do that later. And I set the tail panel up and clamped it in loosely. It's not bad. You know, some of the metal will have to be massaged to get it to line up nice. But overall, I'm happy with the, you know, the body lines. Uh, down here, it's going to take a little bit of effort to get this to roll in. But again, it's just sitting here. It's not really put in place yet. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, it is what it is. Sometimes you just have to take matters into your own hands and massage this metal to make it work. But I think it's going to work out. So here's what I've come up with. In looking at this and realizing that I can't make this portion go up any higher. I'm going to cut this. You know, I don't like to do this, but it is what it is. Um, the front edge of the roof actually fits onto the upper section really well. And if you see, you can see here there's a gap. At least I hope you can see that. I can push up on this a little bit, and I can push down on the roof a little bit, but it's still about a quarter inch maybe off and I can't go any higher because of this flange. Now I can't rotate the quarter up to change that angle because then it drops in the back. Don't want that. So I'm going to cut this right here and push this part up and that way it gives a relief area and I should be able to push up on the drip rail. The thing too is I don't want to try to change I mean, I, I can make a subtle change in the shape of the roof rail because the drip edge or the uh, trim will follow this contour. But I can't, I just can't, I just can't. Not gonna happen. So, time to make a cut. Before I make that cut, I also want to point out there is a transition right here. The uh, flange goes in, it comes up, and then it joggles back a little bit. So I don't want to cut it inside of that joggle, it won't give me enough space. So I have to come outside of that joggle. And also this is a curve. So if I try to cut a straight line, it's going to be off. So I'm just going to follow my tape and come down to this corner. And I'll have to consider what I want to do down here. Uh, I think it's going to rotate okay, but if not, I may need to make a little tiny relief cut. I don't want to remove this piece of metal, I just want to give it a place to go to. Okay, so I made the relief cut. If I take this piece of metal and I make it overlap, I'm going to have to trim that, but I made it overlap. The roof is down in place where it's supposed to be, and everything seems to be okay. So now, let's see if I can show you this, get a better angle. Zoom in a little bit. This is that gap I was talking about. Now I can push this up. So if I hold the roof in place, that takes care of it. Now I need to trim this piece and re-weld that. But now I have a nice tight rain gutter. Okay, so I have things fitting better. I want to point out the flange that was on the quarter panel as it meets the rain gutter. It was too wide. And it was fighting with, you know, with the fitment of dropping into the rain gutter. So what I did, believe it or not, <laughs> there that's the flange you see in there. Uh, like, here's the end of it where it matches into the rain gutter. And before that, it was kind of just a little bit too wide. So at this point, I've got a good alignment on the uh, cut. But I want to point something else out. And I, the reason I do these things is whenever you're trying to put something together you need to think about all the points of contact 
and how they interact. One thing I noticed, there's a gap. You can see light coming through um, where the quarter meets the, let's say, B pillar or C pillar, if you want to call it that. It shouldn't be doing that. Now, why is it doing it? I don't know. You know, these stampings, things move. I can squeeze that together and it changes everything. This part of the rain gutter is supposed to be making contact with that piece. So if I show you this old piece of the car, this is spot welded to, we'll say, the C pillar. So all this was spot welded to it. And it's got to make contact. The other thing I want to point out is when you're doing these things, look at stuff like this, this gap. Now, you can probably see that it's wider. And this is clamped in. You know, this is making contact here. So if I measure that, I've got about an inch and an eighth up here at the front. And if I come to the back, if I can get my camera good, I don't know if you can see it very well, but so many things in the way. Um, it's about an inch and three eighths. So it's about a quarter inch off, which is very similar to that gap back there. So what I'm going to do is take a big pair of clamps here and I'm going to squeeze this together. So maybe you can see what I'm talking about. Now I have pressure on that. I can come back, take a measurement, see if I can get this in here. And that's about inch and three sixteenths. So it's close. And it is making contact back there. So little things like that make all the difference. Whenever you're going to put you know the windows windows back in, you need to have a consistent gap. So just some things to think about. So I think I'm ready to tack weld this back in place. I have to manipulate this slightly and I can rotate the vice grips to take care of the you know transition there. Um, but that's that's how it is. You can see that moves. So there's room to play. And I think it's gonna work. I really do. I want to point out I've been using this guest welder MP200 for MIG welding and if I haven't shown you already it has this cool setting on it you can select what tool you want to use plasma cutter stick MIG flux core lift TIG and there's plasma cutting okay so I'm going to go to um, MIG welding hit enter and then up here at the top you can hit enter again and choose your metal thickness so in this case I'm just going to leave it set at 16 gauge and then I can also fine tune the amperage if I want to with this control over here so I can increase or decrease if I want to so I'm really liking this MIG um, I think I can have a link put in for if you're interested in getting one of these but I just like the way this thing's op been operating So this is welded in now and blended down. Everything fits much, much nicer. And of course, this will end up getting welded up here at the seam later on. And typically what I use is short strand fiberglass to you know cover this and build it in and then use um, my rage to cover everything else. 
you know, there's going to be places like here where you're going to have to either, I may even try to make a little, a little patch to put in there whenever I do put all this back together. And it just makes more sense to try to pat, patch it back in and make it look smooth. Up front, it lines up good. And if I need to make some adjustments, I can whenever I get the new piece or the rain gutter from the A pillar back in. Uh, but, uh, you know, this isn't going to be a big deal because it's going to have chrome or trim on top of that. But I think it's coming along nicely. Now, the next thing I want to tackle is addressing this lower section here. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm going to have to do something with this lower section of the quarter where it meets the rocker panel. Now mind you, this piece up here, where it meets the rocker, is making full contact. So it can't go any lower. In the back here, it is too tight. Uh, the front has a bit of a gap, not very big. In most cases, I would just leave this alone and use seam sealer. But I need to bring this back edge up a little so that this isn't bound when I'm trying to clamp it in. Right now it's touching, and that's just a little bit too tight. So I'm going to make a cut across this uh, bottom section here and I'm not sure yet if I'm going to bring this front section down just a little and bring the back section up so it kind of balances it out. I'd like it to look uniform all the way across. Now mind you everything else is really good. The uh, wheelhouse and the quarter fit together very well and of course I've already addressed the top section with the rain gutter so Little things like this make all the difference whenever you're putting these cars back together. Alright, so I've cut off that lower piece, as I said. I just have a magnet holding it here, but I'm going to have to fine-tune that whenever I weld it back on. The magnet isn't holding it in the right place. I'm just kind of keeping it up there. So, I'll do the same thing I did on the roof, where I just tack welded this all back together. And once I get this in place, I'll show you what it looks like but you just have to take your time doing the spot welds like I did on the roof section. But I think this is going to work out just fine. Now, there may be a bit of a gap up here. I have to decide if I want to use some filler metal in that or if I can just build it up with weld and grind it down. So I'll have to make that decision later, but I'll show you what it looks like once I get this welded back in. I thought I should show you this too before I go much further. You know, I was having a little bit of a conflict with the way the wheelhouse and the quarter were overlapping but since I removed that piece of metal it now snugly fits the wheelhouse just like it's supposed to. You can just see the flange right behind there and so it's much much better. Um, I'm really really surprised. I don't know if I can turn this around and show you or not. Let me see if I can. But basically it now fits the wheelhouse like it's supposed to. Pretty decent. A little bit of a gap up here at the top, but that's very minor in the grand scheme of things. So, pretty happy with that. All right, I'm going to pause at this point. I want to look at some things, and you know, when you sit back and you sleep on things, I know in my case, I, I get thoughts going in my head before I go to sleep. And then through the night, my mind kind of plays with that. I do want to weld on this piece on the bottom of the quarter, but I don't want to do it yet. And the reason for that is I'm not done test fitting. You know, every time you put one of these together and take it apart, and when you're test fitting panels, even though I'm happy with the way the quarter is fitting the wheelhouse and the way the side is fitting the car and the roof is fitting, you know, all those pieces, I'm happy with that. But the thing is, I haven't done anything to the other side yet. And if you remember, I still need to replace the outer wheelhouse on the passenger side. I've got to replace the rocker panel on the passenger side. And then I have to start test fitting the quarter panel and everything else that all interacts. Well, even though all this is fitting nice, the quarter, the roof, all these pieces, I'm very happy with that. And I don't think it's going to be an issue. I don't want to take a chance on having this welded solid and suddenly there's a slight change and I'm having to cut this loose again. So this is going to go on later. As far as, you know, the roof, that was another thing. It needed to be addressed, and I think it's good. I'm happy with it. So at this point, I'm going to put a stop or an end to this video. I do want to turn the car around 
and start working on the other side and that's gonna you know that would make for a super long video and that's gonna be the next one in the series is working on that stuff but I hope you found some good information in this particular video this has been a fun series for me you know I've talked about it before I love to do fabrication stuff and sheet metal and problem solving and I think I'm getting a good bit of that with this car but I want to thank you for watching thank you for subscribing um, you know if you haven't already leave a comment on the video and let me know what you think about it. Leave a thumbs up for sure. And that'll be it. So until next time, take care of yourselves. See you.